Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Friday, April 1st, around 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Winter is over. April Fools. Snow will continue through, well, into spring. Ding, ding. But the big story, 29 tornadoes reported in seven states. Missouri, Arkansas, Alabama, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Florida. Keep calm. It's boom time. Yeah. Two killed that severe weather spawns nearly 30 tornadoes in seven states. Two people were, kill were killed Thursday in the Florida Panhandle when their mobile home was toppled by a suspected tornado, one of nearly 30 that has wreaked havoc across seven South and Midwest states, officials said. The deaths in Washington County, Florida, were the first fatalities reported from the outbreak of the severe weather that began Tuesday night. The Washington County Sheriff's Office said two mobile homes were destroyed and the two people were killed inside of one of them. According to ABC affiliate WMBB in Panama City, two other people in the second mobile home that was destroyed were injured but survived. So our hearts and prayers go out to those in the south, east, where the severe weather outbreak occurred. Now, severe weather outbreak, two dead, dozens of reports of storms. You can see down here just the lightning. More than 150,000 customers were out power Thursday morning. And let's just check on that real quick. And we're over at Power Outage US, and everything is in the clear. Excellent. So there are no, very limited power outages in the southeast. Mississippi, just a few thousand. Florida, a few thousand. So it's looking good. Everyone's got power. Now, that might not be for long. Strong to severe storms in Florida. Snow squalls threaten the northeast, as well as the central Appalachians. Could be picking up some snow here in West Virginia. Now, a stalled front across the Florida panhandle will produce strong to severe thunderstorms with hail damaging winds through Sunday. This includes in and around the Orlando and Tampa metro areas and perhaps extending south to Miami. Meanwhile, snow showers and snow squalls are possible today from the central Appalachians and lower Great Lakes into the northeast and mid-Atlantic. And we'll get to those models now. Here are the models. Looking awfully snowy. Here is your Friday, that little bit of snow you can see there in the West Virginia mountains will be moving up into the lake effect regions, including Vermont and Hampshire will be picking up some snow. And we'll walk this through. We'll have a little burst of activity in the southern mountains here of the Rockies. Here's your Saturday, Sunday, fun day. More snow in the northeast on Sunday as the system drops down through North Dakota there, Sunday into Monday. And by early next week, we're going to have a system moving into the northwest, bringing heavy mountain snow, which is good news for those parched regions. And these systems will continue through mid-April to bring a wet west, some much needed moisture. And that's good news. Now the most insane strike of lightning spotted over Wichita during a severe thunderstorm very well not be the most insane strike of lightning I've seen, but it's certainly an excellent example. Let's take a look at- Out here, Amp you're a land- Okay, we got it all parsed up and let's take a look at the ground up. Like standing in that yard when that occurred. And there you have the insane lightning strike in Wichita, Kansas. All links for the stories that we talk about will be below. Now what we're waiting on is an X-Flare and an M9.6 to make their way onto the solar wind prediction models. And they haven't. NOAA is still asleep at the wheel and they're still showing the models from five days ago, just like we reported on last night, and still no updates. So stay tuned to the channel for updates on the incoming coronal mass ejections and our forecast. Seismic update. Bring it on. We've had some huge rumblers in New Caledonia over the last 36 hours. Three, ma three major earthquakes, a seven magnitude, 6.8, 6.9. And I think we just had a 6.3 as an aftershock. Let me check it out. Yes. So a lot of activity happening in New Caledonia. Luckily, very few people. No tsunamis. And that's good news. All is quiet on the Western Front until maybe just a day or two from now when those other coronal mass ejections, well, they may reach Earth by tonight.
We're a Y Volcano News Update. We've got uh, a lot of volcanic activity because of the space weather. It seems like they're associated. We have a lot of new volcanoes going off and a lot of uh, quiet volcanoes getting more active, like Tall Volcano, three short-lived Frio magmatic bursts yesterday, Liwotolo, Volcano in the Lesser Sunda Straits, sporadic explosions continue, and Nevado de Chilon, strong eruption generating pyroclastic flows, as well as an explosion from Popo, which I don't have up here. Now, Seo Jorge. The likelihood of the eruption increases as 20 million cubic meters of magma estimated intruded at depth. And we're keeping a close eye on that. Just as, take a look at this. Breaking news. Large earthquake hits Europe super volcano Campe Felegre. And I'm sure many channels are fear-mongering about this. If you just go over and look at some of the seismic charts, this, well, it's just not a significant event. There's the big quake in question. Very minor activity going as we go. And in the last three days, almost no activity. So no imminent eruption at Campe Felegre at all. Nothing happening there, just to ease your minds. Now, Porace or Porace, volcano in Colombia, intense seismic activity with a magnitude 3.3 quake. Alert level was raised. Now, this also is not a big worry. Porace or Porace or however you say the volcano uh, is not a big boomer. In fact, it pretty much always erupts at VEI-2 and occasionally at VEI-3. So this isn't a game changer, only for the local community if it does erupt. Now, a couple game changers to end the podcast. The first is the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange, where we will be early in the morning tomorrow, and I'm leaving in just a few hours. So that's why we're cutting this podcast short, because we have a lot to do to get out there to give out thousands of free seeds and medicine. Uh, this event will be in the San Luis Valley in Moffat, Colorado, at the Joyful Journeys Hot Springs. So if you're Local or regional, and you have a few hours, come check it out. It's from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll be there the entire day. It is an indoor-outdoor event. It is kid-friendly, handicap-accessible. There's food, community, and free seeds, and a bunch of stuff to buy. So we'll be at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange tomorrow all day. Join us. And bonus, if you stay to the end, the Complete Herbal. This is a very hard-to-get book by Nicholas Culpepper. And it's a very old book. The Complete Herbal, 100 Additional Herbs, The Cure of All Disorders Incident to Mankind. That sounds pretty important, which is why we're supplying you the entire PDF for free. It begins with all the plates in full color of all of the herbs that they will be discussing. And then it goes over their history, the description, where to find them, and what they're used for. Literally could be the most important book in a grid down scenario. So no need to thank me. Just download the PDF, save it to a thumb drive, or print it in hard copy. It's worth it. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where the mainstream media is nothing but propaganda, come to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project for the real news. And that's a boom. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And we'll see you at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange. We love you.